Welcome to How You Pictured It, the podcast for creative entrepreneurs ready to grow their business in a way that feels good. Here you'll find actionable tips and tools to create the business and life you pictured. I'm your host, Kate Hyde with Dear Kate Brand Strategy. Let's get started. As a professional photographer, you've probably heard the term IPS or in-person sales. And if you haven't, it's really just a way of selling your photography. Instead of delivering your images online, you're going to show your clients their photos in person and have an ordering appointment for them to make their choices and place their order. In-person sales is often touted as the only way to make any real money in the photography industry. Many professional photographers feel that if you want a profitable photography business, the only way to do it is an in-person sales system and to sell your prints, products, and digital images in person. In this episode, we're going to talk about why IPS is not for everyone. And I'm speaking from the experience of having personally tried in-person sales for over a year. I'm going to tell you about my experience with that and why I moved away from it. When I first started my photography business, I wanted to do it right. I wanted this to be something that would be a long-lasting career. I started researching what pricing methods would work best. A lot of the information that I was seeing was to not sell digital images, because this was back in 2010, right when digital images were becoming the thing, and we were moving away from film photography more and more. Photographers who were selling digital images were often called shoot-and-burn photographers, and it had such a negative connotation. So I set up packages with prints and products as my main offer. My packages really didn't make sense, though. I was really just taking a stab in the dark, trying to figure out what people would want and need, and I was guessing. It wasn't that I was choosing the wrong pricing method. It was that I really didn't have enough intention behind what I was offering. That pricing system went out the window pretty quick. Next, I moved on to an all-inclusive system, which was selling at a set price for each type of session. That included the time for the session, plus all of the digital images. And when I say all, it was that I promised a certain number at minimum and then gave them everything that I deemed a keeper image. And if you're like me and an overshooter, that can be way more work than you ever realized or intended. I was promising 20 images and delivering probably around 40. The time that I was spending editing was killing me. Plus, I wasn't getting paid more for delivering more. I was realizing that my pricing was too low for the time that I was spending on each session. I was starting to feel burnt out and not really enjoying photography as much anymore. By that time, I was hesitant to even respond to inquiries because I knew the amount of work that was coming and I knew that it wasn't going to bring in that much money. I was having a hard time just raising my pricing and continuing to be an all-inclusive photographer. So at that point, I invested in a workshop in senior photography. The photographer running the workshop was heavily invested in in in-person sales, and she was making great money at it. I had a lot of questions about how it could work for me, as I was pregnant with my third baby at the time. I was concerned about the time commitment of having ordering appointments and delivering physical products to clients, but I didn't know what else to do. I knew I really needed to raise my income to make this business worth the time I was spending away from my kids. Before taking the workshop, I had focused mostly on family and newborn photography. Moving into the senior market seemed like the perfect time to try something new without totally shaking up my whole business. I knew in-person sales was a method that had worked for my mentor in senior photography, and she provided me with a lot of the tools that I needed to get started. I did some more research on my own to find the method that really fit in with my style and to make sure that I was staying true to myself. My senior clients were interesting because I was not only serving the senior, but I was serving their parents as well, who were a little bit older generation and really were invested in professional prints and products. That made it a lot easier for me and my mindset to switch to in-person sales. I still offer digital images with my senior packages because I knew that the seniors wanted those to share on their social media. So I made the jump and I made great money. I loved being with my clients when they viewed their images for the first time. I loved knowing they were getting some prints and products along with their digital images. And overall, just really getting to know those clients was a great experience. So why did I quit doing in-person sales? The biggest reason was time. That gut feeling I had in the very beginning that I wouldn't be able to manage the time away from my family stood true. But let me explain a little bit more. My kids and my family life always take top priority. My sales sessions were taking away precious time, and most often, clients needed evenings or weekends. And honestly, I would just much rather be shooting at those times if I'm going to be away from my family. I found that the ordering appointments were pretty time-consuming. 
And again, if I was going to take up another evening in my schedule, I would much rather be shooting another client than taking on that ordering appointment. One of the arguments you always hear for in-person sales is that you can shoot less and make more. And that's true, but it doesn't mean that you're spending less time with a client. You're spending more time per client and less time behind your camera. At least that was the case for me. I started my photography business to be a photographer. I loved being behind the camera and I didn't love being in these ordering appointments. The second place I was struggling with time was in the editing process. For a successful in-person sales session, I would edit approximately 45 images, fully retouched. I'm not a fast editor and could easily get caught up in the weeds of retouching every blemish and perfecting the tiniest detail, only for that image not to be purchased. It was kind of soul-crushing knowing that I would spend so much time at the computer editing images that wouldn't be chosen or purchased for the final gallery. After the sales appointment, I still wasn't done either. I had spent several hours with the client at this point, taking their photos, meeting them for the ordering appointment, making sure that they were fully prepared and understood the process. I'd spent time editing, and I wasn't done yet. I still had to place their order with my labs, wait for the product to arrive, quality check all the items, package them, and deliver them. The back-end process was really a time suck for me. Plus, all of those steps included a cost of goods that was really cutting into my profits. I was spending money on the packaging, I was spending money on the shipping, and I was spending money on the products themselves. Time was not only an issue for me, but for my clients as well. They were finding it difficult to carve out more time for an ordering appointment. Most of my clients were only available for evenings and weekends, which is typically family time. Taking time away from family life really doesn't fit my target client and my brand message overall. I'm all about the togetherness, and I want them spending time together as a family doing the things that they love. Many of my clients ended up preferring to place orders online in their own spare time. Some are able to order at work. Others place their orders in the middle of the night when they're up for feedings. While the ordering appointment can be a great experience for both the photographer and the client, I just found it wasn't necessary and didn't fit in with my values and my priorities. After trying in-person sales for over a year, I decided it was time to move on to something that fit not only me, but my clients as well. In-person sales was wonderful for generating profits, but the time that I was focusing on those activities of ordering and the ordering appointments just really didn't fit my values and it didn't fit the life I had pictured for myself. It also didn't fit my ideal client. Now I do a hybrid model where I have a session fee and collections that my clients can order from, but they do it all online. To save more time, I soft-proof my images. The images my clients first see are not fully edited. They're a quick Lightroom edit. And then whatever images they purchase, I do a full retouch edit. That saves me so much time on the computer and means that I have more time to spend with my family. Cutting out that extra editing time also meant that I could take on more clients. When I was doing in-person sales, I knew I was going to have the time commitment of the session, the editing time, and the ordering time, whereas now I just have the session time. My editing time is cut dramatically, and they place all of their orders themselves. The point I want to make here, though, is that there are definitely ways to make money in photography without doing in-person sales. And there's not a right way or a wrong way. It's all about finding what works best for you. If you're listening to this as it's released February 1st, 2022, I'd love to invite you to my free four-day workshop, Build a Photography Business That Fits Your Life. We'll talk about all of the ways that you can build your business so that you're not sacrificing your priorities and so that you're living in your zone of genius and doing the work that you love. You can find the link in the show notes or at dearkatebrandstrategy.com slash workshop dash opt in. This is a live workshop that takes place in a Facebook group and over Zoom. You can join me each day to discuss the four keys to building a business that fits your life. I've also got some great giveaways planned for the attendees and a special offer for my signature course, The Profitable Photographer Sales System. If this episode resonated with you, I would love for you to review the podcast over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and share with a photographer friend that you think would be interested. Tag me at Dear Kate Brand Strategy on any social media platform or DM me on Instagram or TikTok. Have a great week. I hope to see you next week in the live challenge. 